2.30 a.m. March 1872, folks across California were shaken by something. Even the famous John Muir supposedly came out on a moonlit night and proclaimed a noble earthquake, a noble earthquake. But there's no record of an earthquake in Yosemite on this March morning of 1872. Was John Muir crazy? Had a nightmare? Or did something else happen? To answer this, we'll have to travel several hundred miles away to the Owens Valley. Here is the Owens Valley, and there is the little town of Lone Pine. On that same day in 1872, this valley also felt a rumbling, but for them, it was even more traumatic, and the cause was churning right underfoot. While it was out of sight, it sure made its presence known that fateful morning of 1872. But what caused it? Owens Valley, like Death Valley, is a long, narrow, north-south trending valley or trough. And it is bordered on each side by these huge mountains, all of which are fault-bounded. We call this topography the Basin and Range, or, more formally, the Horst and Graben. The Horsts are the mountains. The Grabens are those valleys, like Owens Valley. This topography is caused by the stretching of Earth's crust. I talk more about this divergent tectonism, so check that out if you're interested in learning more about the rifting of America. Steeply inclined faults with thousands of feet of displacement actually define the Owens Valley down there. These valleys, or grabbins, drop along faults during huge earthquake events, which gives us thousands of feet of displacement over time and gives us this incredible topographical variation here where we have mountains over 13 and 14,000 feet adjacent to valleys that are very low, in fact, in Death Valley, below sea level in elevation. The mountains move up along these faults, giving us towering peaks like these we see here of the Sierra Nevadas. And sometimes it even happens quite suddenly with massive amounts of displacement. For example, we saw this in Idaho when an earthquake there caused its nearby mountain Bora Peak to rise by about a whole foot in a sudden earthquake event. Hey, just a real quick message from me, Heather, the host here at Let's Go Geo. Actually, I am host, videographer, photographer, editor, creator, all that stuff. This channel is run solely by me, and I started it because I do love geology and all things related to the topic, and I love teaching, and I thought it would be a great way to bring to people that in the field experience, but digitally. So Let's Go Geo was born. The project's going well, but I have a lot of great other ideas. So if you want to help me out, support me, and help the project move along, you can find me on Patreon, and you can become a fan there as well as get access to exclusive content. So head over to Patreon. Otherwise, let's get back to today's topic. These valleys are geologically young, forming over just a few million years. Each earthquake might cause displacement of maybe 10 vertical feet, but over millions of years, that can form huge topographical differences. Just ask Nevada. But there's something else going on here. The Owens Valley sits right at the geological junction of extensional forces, as well as transtensional and compressional forces. And while many think of the San Andreas Fault as the culprit for all the rumblings around California, there's another culprit here and it's called the Walker Lane. Walker Lane, a series of many faults, is likely responsible for the accommodation of up to 25% of the stress between the plate interactions here. The Walker Lane is a system of complex and widespread faulting found near the border of Eastern California and Nevada, sandwiched between the Sierra Nevada microplate to the west, the Garlock Fault to the south, the Basin and Range Province to the east, and the Cascade region to the north. And it is here in the Walker Lane, the southern portion of which is sometimes referred to as the Eastern California Shear Zone, where we find the Owens Valley Fault System and the location of that large Owens Valley earthquake of 1872, as well as some other large historic quakes. Cutting right through the middle of Owens Valley is another huge fault. And in March of 1872, a massive earthquake struck Lone Pine right along that fault system. Earthquakes leave behind long-lasting signs of their events in the form of offsets of drainages, offsets in the landscape and on alluvial fans, 
convoluted deposits like the ash beds we explored around the Tacopa Basin. Let's take a look now at some of the fascinating signs of the 1872 quake we can still see today in the Owens Valley. This is Diaz Lake. There are scarps on both sides of the lake responsible for the graben or drop block in which the lake is contained. That's right, this lake was formed by the 1872 earthquake. Here at Mount Whitney Golf Course, geology plays a hand in the game. Here at hole five, golfers must hit to a green on top of the scarp. And then at hole six, they actually hit off of the scarp, getting a helpful hand from earthquakes. I'm standing up on this ridge here, and this is actually on top of the fault scarp that is part of the Lone Pine Fault, which is part of the Owens Valley Fault Zone. This is about 15 to 20 feet high here, and it's one of the largest fault scarps of the system. And this is of the result of that 1872 quake. It was probably actually several quakes responsible for the whole displacement here. This boulder is actually pretty interesting. If you look closely, you can see different coloration tones in the rock. This boulder actually used to be buried deeply in the alluvial fan, but during uplift, thanks to those earthquakes, it's been exposed more and the soil has eroded away. There's actually a very faint line to be seen down the rock a little bit, and that could possibly be the old soil level of this boulder. If you're wondering what all these holes are, that's because scientists drilled holes to try to determine the age of the exposed portion of the boulder. All of the many granite boulders here are of the Mount Whitney granite, and it's this kind of duller gray granite that is well known for its large orthoclase feldspar crystals. These dark angular rocks here are actually material eroded down from the Alabama hills just to the west of us. Now what's interesting here is that to the north, we find those dark angular rocks, but if we look to the south, we see more of this light Mount Whitney granite. Lubetkin and Clark did some research on the area and did some detailed mapping and determined that there was right lateral movement of possibly 40 feet. Now, right lateral movement means that whatever side of the fault that you stand on, you actually would see that the movement of the land is to your right. It doesn't matter which way, it's to your right. That's right lateral movement. But what's interesting is what this means is that during the Lone Pine earthquake of 1872 and other similar earthquakes, that this region has actually been moving both vertically up in the Lone Pine quake, probably about seven feet or so, and laterally, possibly in the Lone Pine quake by 15 feet, but in total up to 40 feet, maybe more. That means the Sierra Nevadas to the west are moving vertically and laterally to the north during these quakes. When heading north through the Owens Valley on Highway 395 between Lone Pine and Bishop, California, you'll start to see these interesting features on your left that look a lot like volcanoes. And indeed, they are volcanoes, and I talk all about it in our latest tour of the Big Pine Volcanic Field. But there's something else interesting going on here. One of these volcanoes actually has a line across the bottom, and what you're looking at is a fault. The 1872 quake caused tremendous infrastructural damage as well as deaths. The quake has been estimated to be at least a 7.4 to 7.9 magnitude and ranked as extreme, putting it on par as one of the most powerful earthquakes to hit California in recorded history and similar in strength to the devastating 1906 San Francisco earthquake. This powerful quake leveled almost all the buildings in Lone Pine and the nearby settlements. One report states that the main buildings were thrown down in almost every town in Inyo County. About 130 kilometers or 81 miles south of Lone Pine at Indian Wells, adobe houses were reported to be cracked. The quake was felt strongly for some distance away, causing extensive rock slides in today's Yosemite National Park, where John Muir observed correctly that an earthquake occurred. It also was felt in Sacramento, where citizens were startled out of bed. It stopped clocks and awakened people as far south as San Diego, in Red Bluff to the north, in Elko, Nevada to the east, and the shock was felt pretty much all over most of California and Nevada. Thousands of aftershocks occurred, some severe. 
At Owens Lake, a jetty was being constructed for the brand new Bessie Brady steamship. And if you're wondering about a lake that big to support a steamship in the Owens Valley, well, it's true, and I talk all about it in our adventures exploring the demise of the Owens Lake. The quake struck during the construction of the jetty and caused the lake bottom to tilt to the southeast. So the edge of the jetty was now 200 feet from the water's edge and had to be extended. And the quake took its toll on more than just infrastructure. Of the about 250 residents, 27 were killed and 56 were injured. Just outside of the town of Lone Pine are graves for the 27 people who died from this major earthquake. And these grave sites sit right on one of the Owens Valley strands that broke in 1872. The 1872 Owens Valley earthquake was one of California's largest. This quake ruptured multiple geometric fault segments, generating a complex surface rupture trace similar to the 1992 7.3 Landers quake, the 1991 7.1 Hector Mine quake, and the more recent Large Ridgecrest earthquake. The Owens Valley Fault System experiences relatively infrequent but large earthquakes, predominantly right lateral slip. But as we've seen, movement along these faults can be more complex than that and trigger earthquakes on adjacent faults. I've talked more about this in related virtual adventures here at Let's Go Geo, so look for the Walker Lane Earthquake Adventure. Adventures on the California volcanoes and Big Pine Volcanic Field, the Long Valley Caldera, and why Owens Lake dried up. All found here at Let's Go Geo. So join me on the next adventure. And a special shout out to all my patrons, including some of the ones you see listed here who help support the Let's Go Geo project. Keep it going and keep new adventures coming. In the valley, a dropped block hypothesis is not so faulty.